natural progression for people who are interested in, obviously, in cross-cultural encounters and travel, um, have some kind of slightly offbeat passion driving them um, to, to turn a lot of experience um, into a future that may involve anthropology. And a lot of those folks are, were not necessarily anthropology majors to begin with. Um, anyway, I came to Colgate a really long time ago, um, in 1985, and my very first semester here, I was teaching a course on women in Africa. So what I was hired to do, I called it. It was still a relatively unusual course in the Colgate curriculum at that time. And a student approached me and said, and this was like, you know, September. I had been here all of like three weeks or something. And she said, I'm applying for this fellowship, and I want to go study the Sandy Society in Sierra Leone. Will you help me? Like, Sandy, it's a secret society. You're not going to get into this. What are you talking about? No, 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 it's this fellowship that just sends you off for a year. And I had never heard of it, actually, quite frankly, at that point. Um, and she brought me her, you know, drafts of essays, and we worked on it together. And, you know, I kind of helped her shape it a little bit because what she initially was interested in was a secret women's society in West Africa that you get, you know, in, you are initiated into through clitoridectomy and things like that. I mean, and, and they were not going to let her in to the Sandy Society. <laughs> and, um, but, you know, it, it evolved into a project about <coughs> Um, women's organizations in West Africa as a kind of platform for political activism. And lo and behold, she got it. She was the first Watson applicant that I ever worked with in my first year. After that, I was like, whoa, this is pretty great. Because she suddenly, she came back to me and she said, I got it. I'm going, off. I'm going to Sierra Leone for a year to do this. Like, really? You can do that? <laughs> so anyway, that was my very first um, Watson student, I've had lots of them since, um, had a really good run in the 90s where I had four in a row consecutive years. Um, and they all went on and got PhDs in anthropology, but you don't have to do that. Um, the first one didn't at all, and then lots of them. But, um, and then it, within the, in the last, I don't know, maybe 10 years, I've gone from being mainly a person on the faculty who's worked with students shaping projects that mostly involve Africa. I, I work in West Africa. Um, or students who would come and say, I, you know, I'd like some recommendations for books on interviewing, on field work, on you know, how do you um, uh, do, for example, photo elicitation for, for a project. Really, you know, Nuts and bolts and methods. Um, and I, I, I moved from being kind of that person to being a person on the committee. And I'm, I'm completing now a, um, a three year term as chair of the overall graduate fellowships committee, which includes the Fulbrights, the Beinekees, the, the Rhodes, Mitchell, Marshall, all the rest of it. So I've, I've kind of branched out from just knowing something about Watson's to knowing about all of them. Um, the Watson remains the one that's dearest to my heart um, in many ways. It's, um, as people have already said, it's the one that is not designed to turn out a new generation of PhDs like the Rhodes, Mitchell, Marshall UK fellowships, which are for people going on in their academic training. Um, it's, it's um, open. It's, it, it is the kind of fellowship that people who maybe took a while at Colgate to find out what they really love and want to do and then involves some wandering around in the curriculum for a while, maybe with not the most fabulous GPA in the world. Um, you still need a good GPA, but it's not the most important thing. The, the, your transcript at Colgate is not going to keep you out of consideration for Watson if you have those other qualities. Although it's, you know, it's important and you have to put the transcript in. 
Um, <clears throat> but it's not as important as a, you know, a Rhodes or a Marshall, where we're really looking at students with a 29 and above. Um, so it's, it's uh, has always seemed kind of more open and democratic that way. It's more accessible. Um, that being said, it's still highly selective. There are 40 Watson schools in the country, meaning institutions like Colgate that are allowed to nominate. Each school can nominate four. Um, of the, what is it, then, 100 and, 160 names that go to the foundation, they take it down to 40. Um, so it's an extremely competitive process, but it's competitive in terms of some of the things we've heard about from previous speakers, um, it's competitive in terms of your passion, your obvious background and preparation for this, the fact that, that you've done the homework, you don't walk into the, either the on-campus interview with the, with the faculty here and make a real bad blunder in the sense of, you know, we ask you a question about one of the countries on the list and you say, oh, is that on my list? Um, <laughs> we've had things like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it's, it, so, so the commitment to crafting a really well thought out proposal that matches the person. I want to echo what Becca was saying. Um, the foundation says in its literature, they end Chris uh, reiterated it when he did the Skype interview for us last year. Um, they invest in people, not projects. Which is why, if you look at Watson projects over the years, you will see very similar ones sometimes coming up. There's, you know, over and over again, there's a project on medicinal plants, for example. And you might think, well, gee, they funded something just like that last year. Or there's three of them in this year's class. What's up with them? It's because they're not really, the Watson Foundation is not interested in generating new, groundbreaking academic research on X number of topics. The Watson Foundation is interested in identifying a next generation of leaders, of really important people coming out of college, would benefit from the experience of a year of travel and making the investment in those people. So they don't really care so much what the topic is. They care that it is somehow organically connected to your interests, to your, to some degree, your preparation, um, that, it, that you can demonstrate that you didn't just you know, become interested in this topic as the deadline drew near. That it's something you've been thinking about for a while, that it's something that you may have been working around the edges of in various ways by seeking out other opportunities, opportunities to learn languages, opportunities to do um, independent research funded through other sources like the NMS here at Colgate or applying for other kinds of summer opportunities. Um, they're interested in seeing a kind of cumulative build to this moment so that the project makes sense, but they're not, they're not, they're less interested in is this project going to change the way, you know, scholars in the discipline think about this. That's not what they're out, what they're seeking to invest in. They're not seeking to give you the basis of your doctoral dissertation. Um, because this is not tied to graduate study. So from the side, of, in terms of the pro what the process looks like um, here at Colgate, you, you begin really by talking to faculty who can advise you. Um, using any networks you've got. Uh, uh, Professor DeCombe used his summer internship. That they used her father. Um, uh, the resources include uh, your faculty here. They include um, people in courses.
courses, people who, who are teaching courses even that you um, may not have taken, but you see from the catalog, oh, this would line up with what I'm interested in. Let me go talk to the person who teaches it. That will be open to this, really. Okay. We like this stuff. Um, the drafts of the personal statement and the, the um, project proposal. We have a whole office with Steve and Renee devoted to helping you with that. Um, faculty advisors can help you with that. Generally speaking, at Colgate, we get between 12 and 15 applications in any given year. And remember, we, the committee, can only nominate four. So uh, there is a couple of nights in October when we, um, the committee, which is usually four or five faculty, um, meet. We set those meetings up in the evenings, generally speaking. Um, we do a good 40 to 50 minute interview. Um, as Beth, Beth used the word intimidating, we try not to be intimidating, but there is this process where you walk alone into a room of four or five people who have read your proposal and are about to try to figure out why out of the 12 to 15, you should be one of the ones we forward on. Um, we do a lot of, just like you, know, you may do a lot of trying to guess what the, what the foundation is looking for, so do we on the faculty. We're usually sitting there going through them saying, oh, what, you know, will this one fly? Will this one, will this one speak to the foundation? We're not, you know, I, I think the people who actually put the work into this process every year, I wish we could nominate all 12. Um, sometimes there are ones that are clearly thrown together at the last minute. Those are the ones that it's easy to say, well, I don't think the commitment is behind this. Um, but often it's very hard for us to get down to that for. Sometimes we have fights and arguments and have to take votes and re-vote and so forth. Um, and um, when we get down to our four, we are usually absolutely committed and are sure that the foundation is going to take all four. And we're always just blown away when people don't get them. But we're also immensely gratified when people do get them. Um, from the Colgate nomination point, those four names are sent to the foundation. The next step is the foundation sends someone here. And all of the Watson interviewers are former Watsons themselves. Okay. They are people who um, got these awards. I fully expect they will call you someday um, and you'll get to go do this. They send their interview, there are three. Um, the director and two others. They travel in the month of January, usually January? December, December to February. December, was it December they have awards? The previous year was December 9th. Yeah. Okay. They have a lot of places to go. They do, so they have to go, they have to, those three people have to hit 40 schools. Yeah, so they're, they've got a lot of work. They do. And they have to interview four people at each of the 40 schools. So we get, you know, whoever it is who shows up, does the interviews here. Um, we try to prep our four candidates as well as possible. We do mocks. Professor DeCombe was a huge resource to us this year. We usually don't like to do this to first year faculty, but it was so amazing to finally have a Watson on the faculty that we just dragged him into it you know, instantly. Um, I've been